Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to The Stack. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. Pete. Wow, that was intense, dude. Yeah. Trying to be more authoritative in my life. Great. Wow. Uh, we have a couple Good of reviews coming at you, courtesy of Newsarama.com. we got Ultimate X-Men number 90, Daredevil 104, Spider-Man with Great Power number one. We're also going to have a speed round and a viewer question. Big Ooh. surprise. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Super serious. Uh, let's get right into the reviews, Super Serious, Justin. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of Ultimate X-Men number 90? Good. I disagree. <laughs> I didn't think it was good. I thought it was just like kind of a setup. Well, it is. It's setting up Kirkman's last arc, uh, which ends in with number ninety three. Which to yeah. me does make a good comic. Well, but some stuff, stuff yeah, happens. I mean, occasionally there are first issues of things. Yeah. No. I, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, good always, point. Touche, just, Alex. Yeah. You're always about the climaxes. You. All you want to yeah. see is like the last. Yeah. Punch. All you want to do is climax, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's the thing that I like about this issue a lot. I think it feels big. You know, he wants to end on a big note. He wants yeah. to end on a big story, and it feels big. There's huge stuff that happens for the Ultimate Universe and the Ultimate X Men here. What I like what he's done is he's actually using the Ultimate in the Ultimate Universe. Universe, he's taking mm -hmm. a different mm -hmm. interpretation of the villains and the heroes. Like, Mr. Sinister is the focus here, and it's a different version. So yes. it's like, yeah, that's the whole point of Ultimate Universe. Yeah, do whatever you want, and take it however you want. Yeah. Um, yeah I really Make like it that. ultimate. Wow. That's wow. Bad I just felt like, like, I felt, like, I felt like it was just a little too talky, not enough action. Yeah, there's <laughs> a huge action sequences. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's so. There's like 12 murders. That must be, what's your count? <laughs> Yeah. Your, your bar is be, so high yeah, now. Yeah, it's got to be 256 well, murders. I mean, if it's <laughs> not, you know, I mean, How uh, many Punisher murders Max you sets the bar. 254, right? Yeah, yeah. Boring. Yeah. Yeah, All right, let's move on and talk about Daredevil 104. Yeah. You guys have been totally in love with this series, right? Yeah, yes, uh, totally. So I what like you think about this issue? Uh, it's good. This arc itself, I'm like, uh, it seems very similar. Like, he's trotting similar ground here. I want a real twist on it, eventually. Uh, yeah. I was hoping that Daredevil would lose it a little bit more. You know, he still had, you know, had a little <laughs> held himself back a little bit. <laughs> <Being> ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I don't really no, I, spoil anything about the issues for you guys, but yeah. he loses it all. Yeah, the whole no, 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 no. He's been losing it for like three years. It's been like <laughs> everything was normal, and he's been no, like, there was my still life's some falling restraint. apart. There was still There's, some restraint. Okay, the writing is really solid and excellent on yes. this issue and on the series as a whole. Yeah. As is the art. The art is also excellent. I, I, I would say I would agree with you. This plot line involving. Uh, Mr. Fear, it yeah. does feel, it feels like it's building up another big villain for Daredevil, but yeah. it, it feels slightly forced to me. And yeah. I'm just sick of Mila. I'm not, I don't buy yeah. the romance. I'm not into it. I'm like, yeah. he, his other romance has been blind. so epic. They're yeah, both blind. I get it's that. Like, <laughs> it's like that girl you were dating who was a girl and you were a guy. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. you had something to talk about. Right, <laughs> I know. And she you was so authoritative. <sighs> Jeez. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, something else. Spider-Man with Great Power, number one, yeah. by David Lapham. What did you think about this book? Uh, if you don't know the premise, it takes place in the time after uh, Peter Parker was bitten by the radioactive spider and before Uncle Ben dies. Right. So before he kind of learns gets, his lesson. Yeah, yeah, before he gets all kind of responsibility. So he's just kind of an annoying teenager at this point. Yeah, it almost feels like, just to borrow from somebody else, it almost feels like Spider-Man Year One a little bit. It does, yeah. and what I think is great. And Tony Harris, I love his art. Yeah. And so it's great to see him on a Marvel book doing, mm -hmm. uh, doing Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's solidly written. I, I don't know if you're not really interested in kind of a, a, a fleshed out story like that that takes place in that period. I don't yeah. know what necessarily the appeal is. It's basically a young Spider-Man acting like a douchebag, basically. <laughs> you know, and then he learns, oh, I shouldn't act like this. You know, so it's kind of like not that enjoyable. So you're not interested in that? <laughs> no, no. Why? You um, want him to be a normal? I like. Yeah. Well, I. You know, it's kind of like why they skip over it. And I feel like you know. if you were with Peter Parker when that spider was coming down, you'd been like, "Get out of the way! <laughs> Shit's gonna bite you! Just get out of the way!" You probably would have been like, <laughs> and then all would have been lost. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I would. Yeah, uh, maybe you, I would have pushed him out of the way and been like, bite me! You heard it here first, folks. Pete LePage, the man who killed Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. uh, wow. Very unfortunate. Uh, would you say pick up this issue, yes or no? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, I'd say yes, so that's two out of three. Uh, two out of three and bad. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Uh, we got to get, like, apples at the bottom of the screen so you know, like, apple, <laughs> apple, no apple. Because we're in New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly wow. why I was suggesting it. All right, after the break, we are going to have a speed round and get you out of view, Bell, so stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Blind. 
<laughs> well, welcome back. Yeah. It's time for the speed round. Speed round! It's time for the speed round. Oh, man. Mm, you're a buzz kill. Well, what? No, I just, yeah. No, I've been you're drinking like all day and you're killing my buzz. I know. Pete's Jesus, wasted. The lead explains a lot. All right, <laughs> you want to start this off serious, Justin? Sure. <laughs> Superman Confidential number, number 11. Uh, finishing up the storyline uh, by uh, Darwin Cook and Tim Sale that was delayed. Uh, I love that arc. It's great. It makes me sad to read the next issue box because I don't think the next arc is going to be as good. Yeah. Afterburn number one, another case of what happens if the world ends and what do we do? <laughs> but uh, drawn really well, very well done. Uh, the characters are really cool. You get behind them, you get into it. Um, Mice Templar number three, Mike Oming is doing an amazing job with the art on this. It's very dark, very evocative. Um, the uh, story is great and uh, magical without feeling like, wee, magic. So, I don't know. I pixies! First, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of pixies. There's just, you know, cute little mice. And pixies! So, fish. And, and fish and magic, magic fish. fish uh, yeah. We'll get into the magic fish later. But uh, definitely pick up Mice Templar. It's a great series. Crime Bible, Bible, The Five Lessons of Blood, number four. Great series. I want it to continue with the last issue. Next issue is the last issue, and I want it to keep going on. Yeah. Wonder Woman 16. Uh, I can safely say three issues into the arc uh, that Gail Simone is doing a great yeah. job on the title, so definitely pick it up. All right, it is time for a viewer mail. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay, we actually got a video viewer mail, you guys. Oh. Uh, so, uh, O. Douglas J. on YouTube asks, and we're going to watch it right now. The question I have is, what do you think was one of the most successful or best Marvel DC crossovers? Um, they've they have they have collaborated and crossed over a couple of different times and or not a couple of different times a few different times over the years and the one that I liked the most was the amalgam thing I know that there's like a lot of crazy things going on with you know Spider Boy what was what do you think was the best uh, collaboration between Marvel and DC in in comic book publishing history thanks okay so what do you guys think Marvel DC crosses <laughs> Get those marbles out of your mouth, Alex. Uh, I think I'm drunk. I've oh. been drinking with Peter. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, Douglas J. You guys have been drinking uh, apple teenies all afternoon. What? Uh, we were having a sex at the city party. I don't understand. Yeah, no, the it's, I know. I can't oh, believe I wasn't invited. No, we can't we wait for the never movie. Yeah. <laughs> this summer, get carried away. Oh my God. <laughs> don't worry, you guys. They're going to sponsor our show next. <laughs> yeah, there we're getting them. That's ridiculous. So Marvel DC crossovers. That's what we were talking about. Across yeah. the board, they've been pretty lame to me. Yes. The amount Algum universe, the JLA Avengers, which was so delayed, and then it came out, and but yeah, it's. I think the problem is, I mean, as we all know, if you've read comics for like a year and you see any crossover thing, it's some sort of weird magical device, a ring, up, a cube, yeah, yeah, something ends up in the other universe. Two heroes meet, they fight for a little bit, or like, wait, there's another enemy. Then they team up and they take yeah. down the enemy, and that's it. And they get the ring. Yeah, a I would like back. to see. Somebody not do that. Somebody do a team up that figures out a way of doing it in a different way where they just skip the whole we're fighting and now we're friends thing. Yeah. And also the whole yeah. thing where like they always make such a big deal about like the dimension, crossing the dimensions. Like we get it. If it's a crossover, we get it. they're gonna meet. Like yeah. you don't yeah. need like a big door and like falling through like a crazy <laughs> environment to yeah. end up in the world where Batman is. Although exactly. it which is, is kinda... trippy, which is enjoyable. Yeah, that yeah. Jeez, you are so high. <laughs> what uh, what crossovers would you like to see and what do you think would work? I mean we were talking a little earlier about Spider Man Blue Beetle. I'd be like looking look in the mirror. They're looking in the mirror. Great. Those, yeah. I think it would be really cool. I think it would be fun. It sort of reminds me a little bit of the uh, Spider Man Invincible crossover. Yeah. Which was actually kind of enjoyable and yeah. skipped a lot of that stuff. And I, I would just, they met. I would happened. like to see the uh, Trinity and X-Men. That would be fun for me. Cool. Yeah. I'd like the Punisher to make the blunt end of a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> ah! All right. Stop if you back. have Stop a user question me. for us, you can email us at tips at pulpsecret.com uh, or you can call us at 888-841-7549 and you can upload your video responses on YouTube. Yeah, call Pete. He's standing by. <laughs> He's going to be super sexy for you guys. Yeah. Also, you can comment right below the video here. So please uh, let us know what you think and we want to answer your questions. Pete is standing by. Standing by. <laughs> call me or right below. We'll Ooh. see you next time. We'll see you next time. You're so serious. Buzzkill.